Snagging the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year down at pick number 33, the Toronto Raptors filled their biggest team need, a big body rebounding and rim protecting center. Not only does Christian Coloco provide those qualities, but his versatility allows him to thrive guarding in drop coverage. The Raptors front office has been tracking Christian Coloco's development since he was 15 years old. So when the Cameroonian with unlimited upside fell all the way into the second round, it was no brainer that President Masai Ujiri and GM Bobby Webster used the franchise's lone draft pick to select him. 2019's NBA champions dealt with costly injury setbacks to Fred Van Fleet, OG Ananobi, and Scotty Roy this past postseason, but since the departure of Kawhi Leonard, have slowly but surely started to build up a roster that could potentially compete deep into 2023's postseason. The top-notch organization from the six just selected a player who's going to be looked back on as the number one steal from 2022's NBA draft. So let's look at why the ceiling's so high for the 22-year-old Arizona Wildcat born in Douala, Cameroon, the same hometown as his new all-NBA teammate in Pascal Siakam. Right quick, only 13.7% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Plus, drop a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. After getting out-muscled by top MVP candidate Joel Embiid in the first round of 2022's playoffs, it was clear the Raptors desperately required a pure, strong center capable of controlling the glass, blocking shots, while offensively providing a lob threat and inside presence. It's unbelievable Toronto was able to land a player who in the NCAA earned the DPOY in his conference by blocking 4.3 shots per game per 40 minutes without owning a first round pick. Coloco was undeniably the best rim protector in college basketball last season with his ability to elusively yet swiftly rotate over to the weak side and emphatically block shots. Coloco's instincts make him constantly aware of backdoor cutters looking to sneak their way inside, and it's Christian's 7 foot 5 and a half wingspan and ridiculous 9 foot 5 inch standing reach, which can shock slashers who assume they have enough space. Even players who settle for jumpers can be victims to Coloco's wherewithal and long arms, as watch these two possessions where he easily gets out to block a couple mid-range shots. Maybe the best part about Coloco's backside defense is the fact that he always goes straight up to avoid fouling with fundamental shot contests around the hoop. Just watch the foot speed at locking up the perimeter right here as he blocks it off his opponent out of bounds. Then he pins it off the backboard. I mean, the man's timing is just exceptional. His ability to force the drive with his right lead defensive foot and then recover is at an NBA caliber level. It's rare that a player so young is capable of locking up both the ball handler and roller simultaneously in Hakeem Olajuwon-esque fashion, but that's exactly what Coloco can do with his long strides, reach, foot speed for his size, but again, most importantly, it's the former Arizona Wildcats timing that's most valuable. Offensively, he's a powerful leaper off two feet who can seamlessly catch and spring up for finishes. Coloco's great at taking his time down there, pump faking to let defenders fly by, and getting easy lay-ins. He's amazing at finishing off pick and roll opportunities as he made 71.5% of those attempts. Coloco has the agility and force to finish off pocket passes as a roller without even taking a dribble. Most valuable offensive capability Toronto's getting is the lob threat provided by Coloco. With the fifth overall pick Benedict Matherin as his running mate at Arizona, Coloco led the Wildcats in rebounding and field goal percentage while averaging a team third most 12.6 points per game in 37 outings through his junior NCAA season. But we have to talk about why such a beast at the center spot went so low in this year's draft. First of all, there's a long way to go with his touch around the basket. He's also got to improve his lateral quickness and shooting range. But don't forget how Toronto's player development staff has improved the jump shots of players like Pascal Siakam and most recently, Precious Achua. Coloco was drafted by the perfect system. Shockingly, about every team who had a first round pick in 2022 was looking to take a wing player. So while Christian was taken down at pick number 33, only three pure centers were taken ahead of him in Jalen Duran, Mark Williams, and Walker Kessler. That means that only three teams who are in need of a five-man 
passed on Coloco, and he could very well end up being better than those aforementioned centers in Duran, Williams, and Kessler. Along with winning the Defensive Player of the Year, Christian was the Pac-12 Most Improved Player, and he also made first team all Pac-12. At 7'1", 230, the kids got the perfect body for the pros. Here's what Raptors coach Nick Nurse had to say about the draft pick from his front office. Quote, good shot blocker, really good defensive numbers, pretty decent pick and roll player, and he's got good feet. I think he's not without the ability to do some switching and move on the perimeter as well. Well put by Nurse. People forget how successful this Raptors organization has been over the last decade. Since 2014, this team has missed the playoffs in just one season, but if you count the years where Toronto actually had a home court and didn't have to travel to Tampa to play their home games, Toronto's made the playoffs in eight straight seasons. The results from those eight playoff appearances consist of one world championship ring, 10 playoff series wins, and two conference finals appearances. Next to Golden State, Toronto has the most functional organization in basketball, and they're going to be right back in the championship picture before you know it. Stellar late draft selections like Christian Coloco are the driving factor behind the continued success of this Raptor ball club. What's Christian Coloco's player comparison in your opinion? Top three commenters with the most shoutouts by September 21st earn a free shoe. The top five commenters earn a free jersey. Today's shoutout goes to Thierry, who says, I'm someone who's been only following the top three players and Dyson Daniels, but from what you explained in this video, I could see some sort of poor man's John ja Morant in J.D. Davison. Both are exceptional finishers and came into the draft as not too great shooters. They're also quite lackluster on defense due to their frame, but can have some shining moments on that end of the court. The only thing I see that is slightly different is the playmaking where Ja is much better than JD, but it's not out of the question that JD's playmaking will only strengthen as he gets run in the league. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.